A formal or the click. A, well, a former federal election official on Thursday called the four hundred million dollar plus that Mark Zuckerberg spent to help finance local elections a quote carefully orchestrated attempt to influence the twenty twenty vote and recommended that all states ban fri- private funding of election offices. So, you know. That's fair. You got a big company putting money into something. But it brought up the get out the vote operation. My reaction is that this was a careful, this is a quote. This isn't me saying it. Um, From Hans von Spakovsky, a former Federal Election Commission member. Uh, My reaction is that this was a carefully orchestrated attempt to convert official government election offices into get out the vote operations for one political party and to insert political operatives into election offices in order to influence and manipulate the outcome of the election. So real quick, get out the vote. I didn't know what it was. It describes efforts aimed at increasing the voter turnout in elections. And so far, my conspiracy meter wasn't up. I'm trying to be objective. And I was like, okay, this is what people do. They fund elections. Um, But there's two kinds of get out the vote the first is a general voter registration campaign and encouragement to vote conducted by electoral authorities or nonpartisan organizations which is just hey go vote right and this, this is where the second part is a conspiratorial part go ahead yeah because the second form of a get out the vote effort or a gotv effort is partisan work targeted at potential voters who are likely to vote a particular way for partisans it may be easier and more cost effective to encourage voting by a hundred supporters who did not vote in the past than it is to convince 50 voters to switch support from one party to the other i'm gonna have to read that again for partisans it may be easier and more cost effective to encourage voting by a hundred supporters who did not vote so a hundred non-voters in the past is better than 50 voters to switch support. In other words, it's easier. Uh, it's, it's more return on your investment. So to say, hey, I'm going to get 100 people to 100 people that didn't even vote in the last election to vote in this election. And I know how they're going to vote based on, I guess, the their, data that Facebook collects yeah. because this was the whole thing. See, this is making a lot of sense when you're talking about the two different get out the vote efforts, because now we're seeing that the one we've been experiencing is the second one, which is the evil one where they need your data so they can target you and they target you because you know, you're undecided. Well, to be fair um, and accurate, when we're talking about this particular article, that is not necessarily how this money was spent whenever it comes to like Mark Zuckerberg donating, right? He donated to uh, most of the money to a particular nonprofit organization, uh, which was the Center for Tech and Civic Life is the organization that they, is the one that got most of the money. And what basically what the Center for Tech and Civic Life did was they allowed all of these different voting districts and areas to uh, send in requests for grants f- to help uh, to help fund the election, um, and from what I understand, there were some stipulations that went along with this money, uh, centered around things like mail-in voting, absentee ballots, um, and even funding things like. Uh, let me see what the name of that uh, funding vote navigators and I'll get into that in a, a little bit later but that is how the money was spent this 400 and I don't even know if we've uh, disclosed the dollar amount yet but it was like what 419 million dollars like a half a billion dollars yeah. spent across you know for elections in, in all across the country but particularly in these swing states is where a lot of it was dumped and um that 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 funding actually was 85% of what the government itself put into funding election processes during this election cycle uh, the government itself spent like 479 million whereas you know Zuckerberg and his nonprofits 
that are really partisan nonprofits to say they're not partisan it would be is bullshit. Uh, but these, these partisan nonprofits, these funding spent 85% of the election spending in this 2020 election, which is fucking crazy. That's a private entity spending almost as much as the government in setting up these, uh, these election areas. It's fucking crazy to me. Sorry if I kind of jumped way through that really quickly, but you did, but that's good. Than, I couldn't find reading it. the whole thing. I couldn't find it in the article. Um, but you, you covered that and whenever I'm trying to find it now. Yeah. Now but, I can get into some of the, that's like, that's just the overall, just what, what was done with the money. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know that they were necessarily targeting down to the individual. Like this is where, where, uh, you know, we know this person's going to vote a certain way, but they definitely did that with areas in there. And they, they, they've shown that they've targeted spending in certain areas uh, more so than in that, that would be more likely to vote Democrat than Republican than they did in. in anyway, you get what I'm trying to say there. I'm articulating yeah. it very poorly. But the, the first article was a little bit more general than the right. second one that I clicked through. And in the first article, it mentions um, it's about promoting safe and reliable voting because that was specifically during the pandemic. Right. So there was all this money about let's make it safe and all that, this and that. For mail-in voting. And I think that's another one of those things that the public office takes care of. But this right. is... A, a, this is the first to, election that has been augmented to this degree with private, yeah. I think ever with private, yeah. private funding. Yeah. So the, the first big problem, I guess, is that what's normally a public thing became a private thing. Not so, and we talked about, I think on the last episode or previous episode about, um, how the private, the public sector gets squeezed out because the private sector can do it better and more efficiently and has the money. So the, the public sector loses out to private yes. sector. And that's what's yeah. happening now. Um, why government programs suck and it's all these big private people that come in to do it. So I guess put the problem... Their, put their interest at the forefront, right? Yeah, and then click through to the second article and it gets a little bit more accurate um, about what you were talking about. But it, it talks about how fucking... They didn't necessarily sway any votes either in some of those areas. Like they still, like the money went to the CITL and then the CITL gave the money out to the different offices. And some of those offices were Republican and used it for Republican. So it wasn't necessarily in the end in the favor of the Democrats, but there were some major spots where it was. Um, it says the big CTCL and CEIR, which is the acronym for what was this company name? Center for Technology and Civic Life and the Center for Election Innovation and Research. They passed $420 million of money into local government election offices. Um, they had, it says they had nothing to do with traditional campaign finance, lobbying, or other expenses that are related to increasingly expensive modern elections. They had said they had nothing to do with traditional campaign finance. Yep, it had to do with the financing the infiltration of election offices at the city and county level by left-wing activists and using those offices as a platform to implement preferred administrative practices, voting methods, and data sharing agreements, yes. as well as to launch intensive outreach campaigns in areas heavy yeah. with Democratic voters. This is where it got juicy because the CTCL demanded the promotion of the universal mail-in voting through suspending the election laws. Now, I remember living through this. I remember all this happening. Suspending election laws, extending deadlines that favored mail-in over in-person voting, which greatly expanded the opportunities for ballot curing, expensive bulk mailings, and other lavish, quote, community outreach programs that were directed by private activists. All under the guise of making voting safe during a COVID-19 pandemic. 
And, and so and, and all yes, all of that that was happening was so it Mark sounds like Zuck- a, all of that that was happening was Mark Zuckerberg funding it. Remember all that bullshit about voting and mail in and late counts and Donald Trump and stop the steal and January six and all of this shit all about the voting shit and people. Do you remember all that shit? Yeah, you remember it. Yes, I lived through it. Yes, it was Facebook. When you follow the money of those programs that, because I watched it in real time and I'm just saying. It's amazing how we can come back, you know. In real time, I didn't know it was Facebook. I couldn't make sense of any of it. I never talked about the voting stuff. I couldn't make sense of any of it. And now you see that it's, that money came from Facebook. And that is mind blowing how it works. Yeah, it's not good, man. They drove the, it says, they cr- basically created a uh, unmonitored private drop boxes where people could drop the mail. And that creates a major chain of custody issue. <laughs> Did you see Oliver Stone's new JFK documentary? Uh, no, I need to go watch it though. It's they, on showtime. I need to go check it out. They go deep into the chain of custody on the bullet and how important chain of custody is. So the fact that chain of custody is compromised in this voting line I think is a pretty big deal because of the private unmonitored drop boxes where people are dropping votes. They increased funding for temporary staffing and poll workers, which supported the infiltration of election offices by paid Democratic Party activists, coordinated through a complex of web of left-leaning nonprofit orgs, social media platforms, and social media election influence. Because all the people that, I guess, what I was making sense, volunteer to work on these programs are people who are for the Democrats because all this voting stuff, we got to do mail. I'm not for the Trumpers. I'm not doing voter ID. Right. You know, I got to volunteer, make a difference. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to volunteer. I'm going to make my work there. And we have all this funding. We got it from the CTCL and the CICL. Okay. Follow the science. <laughs> like fucking it's they're the non, CITCL. They're nonprofit. So they're by they're default non-profit, partisans. Dude. They're fucking That's nonprofit. Not, so the uh, amount of additional money that they poured in elections, uh, election offices in Democrat voting areas was truly staggering. To put it in perspective, federal and state matching funds for COVID-19 related election expenses in 2020 totaled $479.5 million. This is what I was talking about earlier. Yeah. The CTCL and CIER money totaled $419.5 million. Yeah, 85%. 85% increase in total additional spending. That's freaking crazy. Of the 25 grants right here I'm reading, CTCL provided to cities and country counties in Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Texas, and West Virginia that were $1 million or larger dollars. 23 of those grants went to Biden areas. 23 went to areas Biden won in 2020. Yeah, they went to areas that Biden won. One of the two counties won by Donald Trump, Brown County, Wisconsin, received about $1.1 million, less than 1.2% of the 87.5 million that the CTCL provided to these top 25 recipients. So yeah, everybody wants to talk about f- Donald Trump, Facebook, and Russia. What about Joe Biden, Facebook, and America? All right? <laughs> right. And then it, it gets, it, so keep going though, because it gets dirtier, right? Even in Brown County, Wisconsin, where heavily Democrat Green Bay is located, the funding disparities are glaring. So the Wisconsin government provided $7 per voter to the city of Green Bay to manage its 2020 elections, uh, whereas the rural co- counties in Wisconsin received approximately $4 per vote, voter. So there's, you know, a $3 discrepancy there. Now read the, this next part's crazy. The CTCL funds boosted Democratic voting Green Bay, which they could take all that out, right? So CTCL funds boosted Green Bay resources to $47 per voter, while most rural areas still had the same $4 per voter. Well, and remember, they're targeting people who haven't voted in the past because it's more likely to get their vote because they don't know shit and are susceptible to propaganda, right? Right. Similar funding disparities occurred near Detroit, Atlanta, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, Flint, Michigan, Dallas, Houston, and other cities that received tens of millions of dollars of CTCL money. So it was a similar disparity in spending in those areas. 
this next this this chart right here that we have on the screen. Right? I know Here's some you. of you nerds out there love charts and demonstrable evidence, verifiable data, provable facts. Look at this so, chart. So this is showing where the the money was spent that 419 million. I'm just um, fucking around this, by the way. I'm, yeah, this is based on um data from the 2016 outcome like where so clearly the top 4 areas are where the bulk of the money was spent. Sure, they are. There's a lot of red in there, as far as the the counties that uh, where Trump won. But the amount of dollars spent in those areas was significantly lower than the four blue lines up at the top of the graph here. So yeah, man, follow the money trail. You know. So yeah, they were accurate in stating that you know actually we had more counties that. Uh, that voted Republican in the past, historically Republican in the past, reach out for these grants and we grant and we granted money to these areas more than Democrat areas. But the amount of money that was given to the Democratic areas far out exceeded what was given to the Republican, the traditionally Republican areas. So now I have and they, a, were and they were focusing on in those areas, getting like like you mentioned, getting folks that did not vote in the last election out to vote in this election and using the methods that were favored by Democrats, such as mail-in voting and so on and such forth. Dirty, dirty shit, man. I'm confused, but I trust that you said that correctly. What, 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 what did I say that was confusing? Cause if you're confused, I'm sure that. No, I'm making fun of myself because, um, that all sounded very smart and you, you did a good job. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was really dumb and confusing. Sorry. Maybe. No, I was making fun of myself because I was like, whoa, this is smart shit. So, and then kind of going on, like they talk about how the money is affected, uh, how the money has an effect, right? Um, they say the original article that all, that prompted all this was an article, the, the federal Federalist article, which is super right right wing leaning right so of course it's going to have a bias to it to be fair right yeah yeah that's one this. thing i have a note actually if anybody is like oh dylan's a right winger yeah and this is all very right wing biased news but i mean the facts are there like the, no, the spending happened i i have a note yeah yeah that's the whole point i have a note somewhere in here that i left that says a lot of republicans supporting this okay so i know i know it's right wing okay but that's the money trail the money trail was there. Yes. Um, and speaking of money, who needs money more than the Bay Area? Oh, because, I was about to just... Oh, go ahead. Uh, the I Bay, had a couple more points to make on that. Oh, did you? Go ahead. Bust it up. So they 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 used this system called the BART system. It looks like your text thing, and I figured that you were like... No, I'm reading out of notes that. off my iPad. Oh, I was like, okay, um, I guess he's done with this conversation. No, I was reading. My bad. It looks like that. Okay, I was reading off my iPad because my uh, my books didn't sync up with my computer today. I didn't have any more um, notes in that article, so I have nothing else to share. But if you got more, good. Take I just it want away. to share like how the money could have potentially affected the elections. Go ahead. So Bart, they used Bart, a machine learning algorithm, which which is considered the gold standard in making in, uh, casual inferences. Um, and Do you have Bart that article is, to share? Can you share that? Sure. Stop sharing. Sorry to cut you off, but you're all right. It would be better if you could show that. It's called Bart. Yeah, this is the article that everyone that that all those other articles are based off of. Is this one right here? Oh, that's the one I was sharing. I didn't know where you were in that uh, one. You're sharing a New York Post article. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. But this was the original paper. This is where I am. So for each county, they used uh, the two-party Hillary Clinton 2016 vote share, the turnout percent in 2016, the county share of the total state population, geographic location measured in terms of longitude and latitude, and per capita CTCL and CEIR spending to predict changes in the Biden's two-party 2020 vote margin. This is the, the figure that they uh, used to figure out the impact of that spending. And as you can see, whenever it gets to um, a certain amount of spending per capita, you know, it increases the amount of votes 200,000. 200, in this particular area they're studying, which is in Texas, right? Um, the actual per capita level of uh, 
CTCL spending in Texas is represented by the vertical line on this graph and is shown to have narrowed Trump's Texas margin of victory by 200,000 votes, which still wasn't enough to swing Texas into Biden's electoral vote column. Um, but similar results were uh, like there were there were there were other areas in swing states where it was a much tighter race. And if you can swing that election by 200,000 votes one way or the other in a swing state where, you know, you might only win by 25,000 votes or 30,000 votes, then you're essentially fucking buying the election with this private funding that was never something that was taking place in previous elections. So it's kind of like this entity that we, 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 we don't really know how to handle at this point. And so now a lot of folks in the Republican side of things are calling for the end of private funding of these local elections. So why are you laughing? I'm laughing because uh, my wife just brought me a fresh cup of coffee and she was like a ninja and you couldn't see her because the green screen. I was like, holy shit, that was amazing. But I was listening to you and basically... I thought I was saying something retarded. No, so I, I can't... I'm working on my poker face, man. I suck at it. But basically they focused on places where they knew they could sway it. Right. Where the vote... And this algorithm range. that they use, that the Federalist paper used to figure out if this type of spending had an impact in these areas shows that it does and so it's likely that a lot of the 2020 election was bought by big tech and Arnold Schwarzenegger 